So I recently acquired this lot of old computers from someone a couple hours away from me. And uh, when they posted it, I would found it as a Facebook Marketplace ad. And when they posted it, they only showed a couple of monitors, um, a couple monitors and three keyboards and said uh, they were selling these computers, $50 a computer or 300 for the lot. And I was wondering if maybe they confused a computer with a keyboard or a computer with a monitor. Um, so I asked them for pictures of the actual computers and they, uh, they graciously sent me a couple. And when I realized what exactly they were selling, I, <laughs> I told them to take my money. Um, so we set something up and I went down and I picked it up yesterday. And it's really amazing. Um, first off, we'll go through some of the less interesting stuff first off. So anyway, these six printers are all different brands, which I think is really, really neat. And uh, they said they power up, which I believe, and I bet most of them are serviceable. And of course, the nice thing about um, dot matrix printers is that they're still a thing. A lot of people, a lot of businesses and stuff still use them from the time that they were made in the 80s and 90s. Um, and some, I think Epson still makes new ones. Uh, but you can buy continuous feed paper and you can buy ribbons and, and these things are serviceable. So I'm really kind of excited about having printers, even though they're sort of the meh sort of thing to have when it comes to retro tech. Um, but I think it's pretty cool. <clears throat> One, uh, there's also uh, a couple of these AMDEC monitors. These are AMDEC 310A, which I believe are monochrome. I haven't powered anything on yet, so I don't actually know uh, much about this stuff. But if, if I'm right the uh, this one and uh well, where's my other one oh there it is sure enough and there's my other m deck so i got these two m deck uh monitors that are uh, monochrome and then there's an ibm um i think i think that's a 12 inch monitor right there uh for a ps2 now i've got a ps2 uh, with i think a 13 inch monitor i think it's a little bit bigger than that one but uh, I think the line cap blew on it. It made a lot of smoke one day when it was sitting with the power off, and I think that was the line cap that blew. Um, <clears throat> so it'll be good to have another one until I can get that repaired. Uh, one of the more interesting monitor acquisitions, though, came with a kitty cat. Uh, one of the more interesting monitor acquisitions, though, we'll see if we can get a little extra exposure on that, is this uh, Cystine. And it, the logo is kind of interesting because it's a cystine with an exclamation point. Hi. Hi. <laughs> yeah. How you doing? Yeah. Kind of in the middle of things, you know. Uh-huh. There you go. So the cystine. Let's try and tip it up without making an idiot of myself here. So the cystine is really kind of interesting. I looked it up online and it's unique in its design because it has these... Um, uh, touch sensitive buttons I guess I again I haven't powered it on so I don't know what it's like but the other thing is it's got this mode button and you can see it right here and that mode button switches it among three modes um, the first is RGB which is a color mode and I think this is a CGA monitor um, and then there's green and amber so it will go to two different monochrome modes one green and one amber which i think is amazingly cool so i'm really pumped about getting that uh, set up and working so uh, anyway on to some of the other stuff this was not actually advertised in the lot and i didn't uh so i had no idea i was getting this um but this is a k pro 16 um, and they say it works. I absolutely love the CRT on that. It's just a gorgeous little computer. It's got a 10 megabyte hard disk on it. Um, the, uh, they said it, they, they said it booted up and it worked just fine. Uh, I don't know much about K-Pros. I know that they were really popular CPM luggable computers. Um, and apparently the 16 was their entry into the MS-DOS market, which at that point I think they had to compete with, uh, Compaq. So for whatever success they had with CPM, they were not able to reach that with uh, MS-DOS before losing the market to Compaq. Uh, but anyway, I'm really looking forward to, to plugging that in. It's uh, not a great keyboard. It's not terrible. Um, but I'm really looking forward to getting that started and seeing what's on it. Um, 
now I've got all these others, this other stuff in the way, so I'm going to pause this and move it so I can get that done. One of the other things I wanted to point out on the MDEC monitors that I noticed um, after I got them home was that they have a mesh cover over the CRT, which uh, is obviously intended to function as an, an, an anti-glare surface, which you can see that it does. It does cut back on some of that fong reflection going on in the surface. But um, I remember that seeing a video, uh, probably Adrian Black or somebody, repairing an uh, Apple III monitor. And apparently they came with the same kind of mesh. And his had a small tear in it. And as he went through it, he's like, yeah, this is pretty much unfixable. So he ended up having to tear it off. Uh, yeah, he had to remove it in order to uh, make sense of anything. But these look like... And I haven't really looked at them real closely, but I don't see any evidence of any damage to the mesh coverings on those. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty pleased about that. So anyway, um, getting a little closer. Yeah, I love that K-Pro. So getting a little bit closer to uh, some of the other things that we've got here. Um, let me see if I can... Well, here. At the top of the pile here, I've got this uh, Corona system. And I've never, I've never actually seen, I've heard of these computers, but I've never actually seen one. And it comes with a, a couple five and a quarter half heights and a half height hard disk. Um, the monitor, now this is the other thing, is while I was talking to the couple about this, um, they said, well, you know, the monitor wasn't there. And they said, well, we ended up having to throw away the broken, e broken stuff, so it's in the e-waste pile. And I'm like you threw it away, you know. <laughs> and she says, well, we still haven't. We haven't taken it anywhere. Uh, do you want it? And I says, yes, please. So uh, she brought back the Corona monitor. And uh, let's see if I can turn it around. Oh, wow. So there you go. The back of it, the cords have been cut uh, because it's broken. And what broken means, I don't know. So uh, it might just be a line filter cap. It might be something more serious. It might be a dead CRT. But I took the risk and said I'll take it because, I mean, it's the monitor that belongs with this computer, so I I couldn't I couldn't leave it behind. So anyway, uh, in fact, uh, when we while we we're talking e-waste, they also gave me this, which is a uh, uh, an old Dell Pentium 2 Windows 98 system, and they said it doesn't work. Um, that could just be a dead CMOS battery for all I know. Uh, but it's got a three and a half inch drive, it's got a CD-ROM, and it's got an internal iOmega zip drive. Pretty stinking cool. So I had to take that. Um, so anyway, onto the rest of the computers here. We've got uh, the remaining computers here are three IBM PCs, two are 5150s, and the third in the middle here is an XT. And one of the 5150s has the dual floppy disks. Uh, the other one has a single and a half height hard drive, and of course the XT has a single half height, five and a quarter, and half height hard drive. Um, I haven't looked at the option cards. The two 5150s are Model Bs. I don't actually know anything about a 61, 5160. Um, I know they were sort of a meh upgrade to a 5150. No one got really excited about them, but that's about it. Uh, and then there's the keyboards, and this is. This, I'm guessing, is the Corona keyboard. Um, I'm not sure. It's not labeled. It says it's made in Thailand. It's got a serial number on it, but I don't see anything in there that posit positively tells me it's the Corona keyboard. But I'm guessing that's probably what it is. Um, it's got this goofy RJ45 or RJ11, I guess. RJ11 uh, connector here, um, which is really kind of looking bad. Down here, the plastic um, coating over top of the wiring is peeled away. So I don't know if this works or not. It's kind of loose and tore up here where it goes back into the keyboard. So um, I'm probably going to have to replace that. But uh, then for others, set that up there. Then for the other keyboards, I have two IBM Model Fs. Right there and so far as I can tell they all have the keys Ooh, and that gorgeous clicky action mm. and then this 
this really got me excited because this is a Model M silver label. Uh, and the date code on back is July of 86. Now I have my own Model M because I have a PS2, which is right here. And I've torn it apart because it needs the bolt mod on it. Pull this out. So this is my Model M from my PS2 from when I was a kid. And that's a uh, July of 87 date code. So that's a year old. This is a year newer. And you can see that's a white label and it's got the numlock keys and everything like that. Um, but this one, it's got the silver label and it doesn't have the numlock or caps lock lights. I said keys, I meant lights. So this doesn't have the lights. Oh, and it's missing a nine key. But uh, it doesn't have the lights, um, which I don't know that much about Model M's. I've researched them a little bit. Um, I knew about the silver label. I didn't realize this was not a thing on the first uh, iteration of these. So um, apparently they only made these from like 85 to 87. So this had been in the middle of the production of the silver label. And then uh, my keyboard would have been early in the production of the uh, white label, I guess. So anyway, that was kind of uh, interesting. Oh, yeah. And of course, and this, I, it makes sense, but I didn't realize that the... Uh, the silver label has a regular DIN, uh, PC DIN style connection, just like the Model F's do. <clears throat> but the next generation, of course, upgraded to the PS2 style connectors. So here, we'll move that aside. Then this was sort of an interesting thing. Um, again, it was not... Whoops. I got piles of stuff here. There we go. It was not in the uh, original... It was not in the original uh, listing. Um, it's a Keytronic keyboard but it's in the box it's got the original foam oh here it is there's the model number it's a keytronic it's a keytronic kb5151 it says professional series it's got the operator's manual in it i don't know anything about this keyboard i don't know that much about keyboards in general but i don't know anything about this keyboard uh, but it's listed as being for the ibm pc or xt and of course it's got that DIN style connection, so it certainly dates properly. Um, it is horrible to type on. I would hate this. The only thing I hate typing more on more is, than something like this is the uh, flat scissor style garbage keyboards they force us to use at work. Um, but it's, I mean, the keys are yellowed, so I mean, they're going to have to get retrobrited at some point, at least very gently. Uh, and it's, it's really kind of an interesting keyboard. There's a, oh, there's a missing keycap. Boy. Or maybe that doesn't do anything. It doesn't even move. Something's, something's goofy with that. So I don't exactly know now. I imagine this works, but I kind of wonder what that's all about. And I may not be able to restore this completely then. It seems like a really um, odd piece of technology. You know, just sort of a, a rare, more rare keyboard flip it over. You know, I'm going to knock any, everything off. There's really not much on the back, just the FCC label. And nothing particularly interesting. It does have, hang on a second here, it does have legs. It's kind of sticky rubber anymore, but it does have legs. And overall, I mean, it's in really good condition. It's not, it's not in bad shape at all. It's obviously been used, but it's not in bad shape. So I'm thinking that's, uh, Definitely got to be an interesting piece to work with. Um, so what else do we get here? Okay, well, a couple of nothing terribly interesting. Some IBM documentation that came with the uh, computers. And then four of these OEM ribbon cables for the printers. And I don't know if they're compatible with all the printers or just one brand or, or anything. I don't really know anything about them yet. But, uh, yeah, that was sort of fun. So I, I, as they were hauling this stuff out, I asked, you know, I asked them why it was here. And they said, well, the house had been empty for maybe 20 years. Um, and they were remodeling. It was an old 1870s brick and wood house. Um, 
and they said that the previous tenants that had been in there ran a computer repair shop and these things had just been left behind. And I'm like, really? They left that behind. Okay. So, of course, it wasn't as valuable 20 years ago as it is now, I guess. So anyway, there was extra boxes of stuff that they had. And one of the things that I thought was really neat is uh, mainstream, M-A-Y-N stream, 2000 DAT drive, which is just these, is that a Centronics parallel printer connection, I guess? I don't know. I mean, I grew up in this technology and I just, some of this I just didn't care about at the time, I guess. So, um, but anyway, a DAT drive, which a friend of mine says he has, uh, he has uh, some DAT tapes um, that has some stuff on it. So I don't know if I can get this working. Maybe I can get that data pulled off for him or something. Looks like a 16-bit ISA card, a few chips on it. So obviously it isn't meant to be connected to anything. It's a blank on the back. It's internal, a couple internal headers. Don't know what that does. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's neat. What we got here? Blank five and a quarter floppies in a plastic bag. What is this? A compact 9.1 gigabyte ultra wide SCSI. So that's a disk drive. Don't know if I'll ever be able to do anything with it. I've got an old compact machine, but I doubt it'll take that. So we'll see. We'll see what we can do with that. And then this looks like just a two gigabyte or oh, 20 gigabyte. Oh, it's an iOmega 20 gigabyte peerless. So I'm guessing that's some sort of data storage device, obviously never seen one of those before power adapter maybe for that maybe for something else a five and a quarter inch floppy of wang utilities drivers well that looks old school release version 1.0 neat um and then in here this is kind of cool we have microsoft c compiler six disks i mean that is old school microsoft that's the best all right microsoft c compiler then the microsoft update dev kit and learning microsoft code view so there you go software pretty awesome then uh set that aside okay there we go so uh Bunch of CDs, not a whole lot on them. CAD drawing, somebody's CAD drawing, PC lock and WinZip. Got it upside down, but whatever. Let's see here. Fixed asset management system, disk one of one. CDW virtual tour, so CDW. Oh, here we go. Here's a blast from that. There we go. Here's a blast from the past. <laughs> it's 20 free hours of Prodigy Software. Ooh, baby. Sign me up. I remember getting these all the time. I remember getting the three and a half inch floppies in the mail and using them as drink coasters and stuff like that. It's laser jet drivers, Easy CD Creator 5. I remember using that. Uh, Win95 Office Jet, I remember those. Man, it's like I use some of this stuff. That's amazing. Adobe Photoshop Deluxe. PC Anywhere, that's a thing. That's cool. Does that have the disc in it? Yeah, sweet. Copy of PC Anywhere. I think that's pretty neat. So uh, let's see, what else have we got? Cisco logos, Cisco logos, because yeah, we need those. Um, so most of these are just copies of disks. We have IBM DOS 401. Uh, let's see here, DOS 3.3 boot disk, more 401 stuff, a bunch of blanks it looks like, or at least unlabeled. It's QuickBooks, QuickBooks for DOS. Oh, here's some proprietary stuff. So here's Borland DBase version five. 
Oh baby. Rock, wrap, and roll for Windows installation. Paramount Interactive, copyright 1993. Man, I hope those work because I gotta try that. <laughs> that looks awesome. <laughs> I have to image them at least to see if we can make them run in emulation. I don't know. I don't know. And here we go. Corel Draw 5. So there's like 16 discs of Corel Draw 5 in here. That's pretty cool. Let's see. What else? Looks like maybe games. Uh, nothing terribly interesting in the rest of that. So there you go. There's some neat software in that. I have to play around with that. Okay. Let's see what else we've got. Let's just set that down. Carefully, carefully. All right. We've got two or three other bags of stuff that they sent with me. Let's see. Blank disc. Or unlabeled disc. Blank is assuming too much. Okay, so what have we got? PC games. There's a bunch of five and a quarters. PC games, unpacker, sorcerer, sorcerer programs. Somebody's name on this. I don't know who that is. R. L. Brahman, Bauman. R. L. Bauman. A. S. M. Tool. Apparently, he was some sort of developer or she. Uh, PC pinball. Oh, that looks cool. <laughs> uh, start, Star Trek, etc. Okay. Oh, holy cow. So there's a cystine. I mean, I've got that one cystine monitor, but I've never heard of cystine before this. And apparently they made cool looking floppy disks too. Awesome. All right. So what else have we got? Release games, load DOS, type name of game, games. So there's a lot of games in here. PC Monopoly, uh, Formula One. Two disks for Formula One. More PC games. Just PC games, PC games, PC games. Direct Link Software, EGA Games. Oh, that's hopeful. If there's EGA Games, maybe I've got an EGA card in one of those PCs. Uh, PC Games, PC Games, PC Games, PC Games. Somebody who's into shareware, and public domain and stuff, no doubt. Double Dare, Turbo Champs. That's cool. Detailed instructions on how to play Turbo Champs. Was action break, so apparently it's a racing game. Jeopardy. I used to play Jeopardy a lot. I don't know. I was just weirdly obsessed. It was it wasn't a great game when I played it, but I was just weirdly obsessed with it. Big blue disc, January of eighty nine, so that's gotta be something. I don't know what big blue disc refers to. Um uh, boot DOS, so maybe it's some sort of system utilities type thing. Uh big blue disc, big blue disc, big blue disc. Kodak diskettes, I remember those. Uh, train Dispatcher. Train Dispatcher. That looks kind of cool. And Deluxe Paint. There you go. Awesome. Deluxe Paint. Okay, cool. What else have we got? We have... We have... AccuCare DOS 7.0. AccuMed Software. Interesting. Let's set that in the... <gasps> Oh, look at that. Corona. Corona Data Systems. So this was definitely before they became uh, Cordad or something like that. So Corona DOS version 2.11 release 4. That's great. I have some original software. It's kind of tore up, but the disc looks okay. That's great. So what else have we got? Technical information, Microsoft TechNet, October 2001. That looks boring. Okay, whatever. Developer stuff from the early 2000s. These are just a bunch of blank disks and uh, PowerShoot Plus power management. Um, I wonder if that's for a battery backup or something. More TechNet stuff, ProSignia. Windows NT server, not for retail or OEM distribution. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, wow. So, Omniform 
bunch of zip disks, which I've got a couple of zip drives. I've got a spare internal zip drive, and I've got an external one from somebody recently because I used to have an external one, and I'm really, really, really sorry I ever got rid of it. It's like, what was I thinking? So then we got a bunch more three and a half inch disks, which I'll set aside over here. File them. Uh, PC anywhere again? Okay, bunch of software. Software's cool. I like software. Uh, let's see. What else have we got? We have. I'll just dump these out. Just because we have a bag of mice. We have a bag of mice and an ugly compact trackball dating, I'm guessing, from the mid 90s, maybe. Interesting to have the laptop for that. I bet somebody has a laptop that would need one of those. So these look like all compact mice with PS2 connectors. A yellowed Microsoft mouse. Nothing terribly exciting in that. Ooh, a Packard Bell mouse. Packard Bell is a fun system. That's kind of cool. I'm glad to have the Packard Bell mouse. And then some telephone cable and a broken pair of headphones. Yahoo! All right. All right. Well, one last thing. Don't know what that is. Don't think it's anything I need. Uh, let's see. Ooh, expansion card in the box. D-Link, quick installation guys. So this is a D-Link card. Yep, there's your 3Com chipset. That's cute. D-Link Ethernet card, 10100. It's even got the telephone, little telephone symbol with a line through it. This is not a modem. So Etherlink 10100 PCI card, cool. Could possibly even have a use for that. Uh, oh, a 144 zoom modem. How much you want to bet that doesn't work? Not that I can actually test it, but still. Switchy. Those are the best. I love the external modems like that. Love to get an old 2400 baud haze or something. Let's see here. Five and a quarter inch floppy disk. I've already got a couple. I think I went from having none and having a hard time finding any to. Now I've got like three or four, which is awesome. Let's see here. This I saw when I was loading it up. Double-sided, double density, five and a quarter, BASF floppy disks, unopened in the box, from Walmart for $4.43 a piece. And then, I know what this is. Oh man, oh man, look at that. Old school IBM full height five and a quarter drive with a cardboard insert. Isn't that beautiful? I've actually got several of these now. This sort of thing I just don't expect to ever have any of, and then all of a sudden I got a bunch. But there you go, spare five and a quarter, which I can guess must have came out of one of those machines when they put in a hard disk or something. So anyway, there you go. That's it. So anyway, that's just a quick preview then of what I managed to pick up at this really fantastic find. Um, so I'm going to start going through these and doing power on and just see what's on them. One of the things I need to figure out here pretty quick is a way to transfer data from these machines. And I don't have uh, an XT to IDE to CF or SD or, you know, whatever data storage technology you want to talk about. I don't have any way to get anything. I don't, I don't have any way to use that to um, transfer data off of the existing disks. And there are uh, three of these four machines. No, wait a second. Yeah. Three of the four desktops have a hard drive and the K-Pro has a hard drive. So uh, I need to figure that out. And I'm actually working on a solution. The, the guys, I think, in the vintage PC forums have been really, really, really helpful in getting this sorted out. So 
I'm pretty optimistic I'm going to come up with something here that'll let me get uh, pull the data off of this without having one of those uh, XT to CF or IDE or whatever you want to call it adapters um, installed because I don't have one. So um, anyway, that's once I get that figured out, then I'm going to go through and start powering on and testing these guys out and just seeing what's on them. And, uh, and I'll do a video for that. So see you later.